Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I hope to make orbit and so I should pick up this contract to have the first artificial satellite. Seems to pay quite a lot but then the failure is definitely not an option. Then again they give us two years. Of course with Kerbal construction time now who knows how long it's going to be until I can build the, the rocket that's necessary to do this. We'll find that out soon enough. Uh, launch new vessel, lots of conditions. Okay, it's unmanned. Oh, we have to collect science. Okay, so that's important to know. We have to collect science from it. Very important. And so, okay, that is good. And then I want this to be a communication satellite. So it's important to have enough communications array so it can help with future missions. So I will uh, accept this contract. Then we also have this uh, sounding, sounding rocket medium, which asks us to put a sounding rocket up to 232 kilometers so uh, we'll do that and um, otherwise we automatically get the speed and altitude records I thought we had bro broken some of these but I guess uh, I don't know how it works uh, but anyway those aren't uh, particularly important so you can see the completion doesn't give us a huge amount compared to the actual contracts especially this first satellite contract is very very lucrative and actually we got the bonus already which is excellent uh, we might have to use a lot of that bonus to buy some uh, buy some upgrade points to increase our build speed though we'll see about that okay these are aircraft aircraft missions so we'll hold off on that for now now if we're going to make orbit then I would want to use this guidance unit uh, even though it's heavier than the sounding rocket avionics package it'll take a lot more uh, trial and error to get the Sunning Rockets avionics package to orbit and again I want to expedite as quickly as possible I want to make straightforward rockets that will work and in this case using the guidance unit as a basis so that we have SAS and the avionics will be helpful so that's a good basis and now we know we need to have antennae and we also have to have other instruments perhaps this is a good time to start using fairings so now we discovered that the procedural structural elements tend to overheat pretty easily. That's worrisome. The, they don't seem to have a different max temperature than say these procedural stack decouplers, which is interesting. And in fact, that's the default max temperature for practically every, uh, lots of parts at least. Uh, for instance, these attitude jets, um, even the fuel tanks. So I don't know why the procedural structural element seems to have a problem, but maybe it's it's that issue where if you make it too small, it causes uh, weird heating issues. So maybe it'll be all right to use it here. I'm using a lot of maybes. Uh, that's probably not a good sign, but I want to have it be, maybe we shouldn't use the procedural structural element. Perhaps a battery would be a good core for this though same heat tolerance but uh, we do need some extra battery life so that uh, we can complete the experiments and all and make sure that it gets into orbit properly so that's what we will do now the rest of the rocket now we need to unlock some engines oh I thought we had uh, unlocked the oh right Kerbal construction time it takes some time to get the research done let's see what's up with that so this is going to be orbital uh well, what do we call it uh don't want to use stay putnik don't want to use sputnik you know what i'm just going to call it nick nick one okay so not stay putnik not sputnik just nick all right okay so here it says tech and it looks like early orbital rocketry is going to take 561 days and early construction is gonna take 280 well that's gonna out well it's not quite two years but it's really gonna put pressure on our contract out actually so if we remember the contract said uh, this is one year in well it's two years and that one is only 89 days hmm so we've got a bit of a problem here We need to hurry up our... Well, I guess it is time to uh, buy some upgrades. Oh, we got two more upgrade points. All right, let's put that into R&D because this is going too slow. 
Uh, how quickly, how much quicker is it now? Okay, 384 days and 192, so that's good. But clearly we need uh, to up that by a lot. Yep, yeah, I'm just gonna put it all in, uh, all in R&D upgrades. That's expensive, but uh, that's the only way we're gonna do stuff in time. It looks like... If this is going to, if sounding rocket medium needs uh, needs to be done in 89 days, I guess we'll have to use an error B rocket to do that. So let me build one of those. Actually, maybe we can uh, pull this alpha out of storage. Let's see. Uh, let's edit this alpha and change it to something that can get into uh, get to a higher altitude to meet that contract. So this will be an interesting test of what happens when we uh, when we edit it. You can see it's got original and edited here. And so it's going to tell us how that works out. I guess the best thing to do would be to add a small stage on top. Just a single aerobee would be a good way to go. That'll get it a little bit further. Get the feeling uh, from the live streaming that I should add separation motors on this too. So I'm gonna add four of those. Sort of like so. And I'm gonna tone those down a bit, but they'll fire on SEP. So a bit more complicated. Now 20 hours on the build time, extra build time. Let's tuck those in a little bit. I don't like the way they're sticking out. All right, let's save edits. All right, let's see the no, nope, not distant object enhancement. I want the build list, and let's get the beta going first. Don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we don't have anything better to do while waiting for the research to take place. Just in case, I'll build an extra beta. There are only 116 funds anyway. So yeah, build one of these. Build. Okay. 10 day build time. Now I expect that our orbital rocket will take quite a bit longer. Okay, so we've got movie time effects as before. I think that's fair enough. Thrall is up. There's no SAS. And uh, let's have ignition. And launch. All right, good start. Okay, we've got loss of thrust on one of the engines. Remember, we're trying to go to probably about 240 kilometers just to be safe. Okay, looking quite good actually. Surprisingly, in fact. It's actually stopped uh, spinning all on its own. I guess that's because the air is too thin. Don't know why it stopped like that otherwise. Okay, here we go for SEP. Okay, separation. And ignition. Ooh, ignition good. Alright, we keep going. This is gonna get pretty high up there then. This little guy. Apoapsis already passed what we were looking for. Oh, we've got reduced thrust. Oh, now that it's only one engine, we can take a look at what actually went on. Oh, okay, so it's... Oh, no, that's separation motor, separation motor. Come on. Um, it's at 3.8 kilonewtons, so it's half, half the thrust that it was supposed to be. So that's what happened with the loss of thrust there. So what we need is, well... This sounding rocket me. Oh, well, we got uncrewed altitude record of 140. Okay, good. 
We can get the uncrewed speed record? No. We didn't make 3,000 meters per second. Uh, but we can hopefully get this sounding rocket medium. Just waiting for that. Uh, 232. We're at 200 now. It's going way past 232. It'll be going at to 586 kilometers. Uh, looks like it fulfilled it. Well, we got 160 and 180 there. I think uh, that uh, something rocket medium still hasn't. I mean, it, it sees all the states being okay. It doesn't say reached. Doesn't accept that it's reached. I don't understand. Well, let's just clear these out. So, yeah, we've fulfilled all the stipulations, but we haven't actually got a full contract fulfillment. I wonder why. Do we have to do some science? Is that the thing? Let me just transmit this blank science just in case that's a that's the requirement. Nope, that didn't do anything. So what do I do to get it to acknowledge that this is uh, this has done its thing? Hmm. Well, let's just take it through apoapsis. What's this bad? Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's a uh, stage recovery. We definitely did not intend to recover that stage. Well, this time I don't think this got. Well, nope, this thing still survived. Hmm. Aerodynamics and uh, and daily reentry. It was. I mean, real heat. Still a mystery to me. Still a mystery to me. Not entirely sure what's going to survive and what won't. Definitely wouldn't have thought that this would survive. I mean, until it smacks into the ground, of course. Okay, let's take a closer look at that contract in Mission Control. Maybe it's because it wasn't... Uh, well, I mean, it was sort of a new vessel, but technically the... It was based on a vessel that was built before the contract was taken. Could that be the thing? Otherwise we were definitely uh, a destination Earth, yeah, definitely. Altitude above, yeah. And uh, definitely unmanned, so that's the only explanation I can think of. We are using the sounding rocket unit, so even on that score. Now it's not a big problem if we fail this one. The failure rate is not bad, and we don't even lose any any reputation for it. Unlike, say, this, which is huge. Let's see. Well, we've got two rockets being built. I think we'll uh, prioritize the beta and try that again. Okay, let's take this out to launch pad. And see if we can fulfill the contract with this. Otherwise, I don't think I can fulfill that contract. I mean, and buggy contracts are a thing sometimes. Okay, so here we are again. And let's not uh, waste any time. Let's see if the engine's light. And go. Well, these uh, whack corporal versions of the Aerobee seem to be in tip top shape. Okay, set. Okay, and ignition. It's possible we didn't even need this separate stage in order to get to 232. I wonder if it just doesn't like it going so far above 232. I don't know. Ah, we hit 600 kilometers this time. I don't think we're going to get extra points for that. Okay, uh, well, we 
took out the uncrewed altitude record of 200 kilometers. Still get, didn't get any speed record. Looks like these altitude records, sometimes they give it to you, sometimes they, I mean, they're not going to give me 300 kilometers, for instance, but probably next time I launch, they would. Now, this thing is still not getting fulfilled, so I guess it's just buggy. All right, hopefully, hopefully none of the other ones are, especially the ones that are going to charge me more for failure. All right, well, let's see what happens to this. All right. Nope, it pretty consistently survives. I mean, the rest of it gets blown up, but this part, this part like, likes to survive. I wonder what the max temp on this part is. No explosion? Ah, that's a chip. Okay, Space Center. Okay, well, let's see what other contracts are available. These, it's just these two. Guess we have to get to orbit in order to proceed with anything. Fair enough. Uh, with that in mind, I probably won't queue up any more rockets. We'll let the Alpha S be our new rocket in storage. And let's just focus on our technology. Let's uh, work to completeness on... Well, I mean, early construction isn't going to give us anything in particular. Interesting, it doesn't say researching here. That's dangerous. If I press this, does that mean it'll take five more points off of me, or will it recognize that I've got this con uh, I've got this researching already? It's such a good question. I can't resist knowing. Okay, this note is being researched. Okay, all right. Well, let's get that message for that one too. Okay, good. Just want them green. That's all. Now, as far as unlocking the parts, does that take time too? I should probably... Okay, I have to wait. But that says owned there. I wonder what happens in the VAB in that case. Nope, it doesn't show up. Okay, so no problems there. Very consistent. So, no bugs to report here. Let us warp to... Well, we really need both of these. We, I especially need the engines, so... I'm just going to go ahead and warp to that completeness. And hope that doesn't hurt anything. Yep. Let me see if there's any... Oh, there is another contract. Sounding rocket medium again. Shall we take it? Or shall we assume that it's not going to work? I'm, I'm just going to assume it's not going to work. They only gave it because uh, we failed the other one. Okay, let me just pass on that. Okay, uh, work to complete. So, better part of 1951 being spent on this research. Now, I will want... Ooh, uh, RD-103. Derived from the V2 engine, used to power the R5 similar to the redstone rocket uses ethanol sort of like the idea of an ethanol rocket um, well I definitely want the Vanguard this is more powerful than the Vanguard but I, I don't think the Vanguard usually lit high up so that's the downside Test flight reliability engine something. Engine cycle information for this engine. Rated burn time 145 seconds. Oh, that's interesting. To, so that's... Okay, so, uh, so we know that the stage isn't supposed to be more than 145 seconds. Very interesting. Doesn't say anything like that for this one. It may all show up if we purchase it. AJ-10 I want. Oh, look at all these. So, uh, this variant has a burn time of 377 seconds. This variant has 240, 315, uh, 115, and 150. Hmm. 
Okay, let's get the RD-103 as well. It's a little bit more expensive. That didn't show up. And it doesn't look like it's configured with the same information. That's a shame. Well, uh, then let's let's go with... Uh, so I guess this isn't configured for test flight, or I don't know. Does this show up with that information? Yeah, it does. 125 seconds. Well, we haven't had it burning for 125 seconds or anything close to that. So let's say an AJ-10 upper stage. Seems reasonable. One ignition. I'll probably want those little rockets to help us. So separation motors. Uh, they seem to be attaching right on this portion. They like to be off to the side, but they don't like to point down very much. So now let's fill this up with its fuel. Now it'll be a minute and four seconds. How long did it say it should be burning for? I don't think I can get one of the other variants yet. Let's show the UI. No, we lack the technology for any of the others. So we want the 1037. Is the 104, 142. Here's 1037. So 115 seconds. So that's a minute and 55 seconds max. Let's just go for that. This is highly pressurized false, so we need highly pressurized true. It only says uh, 33. Oh, oh, that's because I've got the boosters at the same time. Sheesh. Stage those separately, and then they'll be clear. There we are. That's more like it. That's normal. In fact, I... well... We'll try this out for now. We've got a guidance unit. We can steer. And it's got, uh, th does it have gimbling? That's important. Yeah, it's got a three degree gimbal range. Okay. Vanguard's only got, uh, if we could see it, I don't think it's gonna let me see it. It scrolls this one, but it doesn't scroll the other part. But then, uh, off to the side we see 133.8 kilonewtons in vacuum. Now, this variant, how long is it supposed to burn for? 145 seconds. Well, let's just get that done. Oh, uh, fuselage again. Okay, that's 145 seconds. Clearly not enough. So let's say we go straight to this one. We'll probably need a larger fuel tank then. Just gonna attach it like this for now and then I'll just make it look prettier. So there's the ethanol. And how long does... oh, this doesn't have a burn time specified. Maybe we should slip in the... I don't know if it'll work, slipping in the vanguard in the middle. But we might actually have to, looking at this. The problem is we've got a heavier payload than I would normally try and launch first. Maybe I should just lighten that up and go with a lighter rocket altogether. Well, that's not going to get to orbit. Looks like we're going to have to reconsider this. It's just not enough power. Really, the mass is the guidance unit. That's pretty darn heavy. And, in fact, uh, we're over our avionics limit. So, first of all, let me reduce the size of the battery. That's easy enough to do. I think maybe the course of action is to not have the guidance unit be part of the payload. And what I mean is, eventually, this portion is going to fly off with an Araby at the bottom. The guidance unit will point it at the right direction, and then the Araby will just have to burn. And we'll have to hope that it doesn't flip out. Sounds dodgy. It, it really is dodgy. But it's the best I can do. Okay, maybe this way around will make more sense. And then we'll have a little fuel tank. I won't have any way to control it. This is going to be interesting. But we'll be able to orient it properly beforehand using that. I don't know. I mean, the Vanguard rocket has... Uh, Sea level ISP of 248 and a vacuum of 270. The Araby has 191 and 218. 
maybe having two vanguards at the bottom here would be the better idea. Not much space though. These baby sergeants have a better ISP than the Araby. Maybe we should go with the sergeants for the first time ever in any of my Realism Overhaul series actually use the sergeant. Unlike this Tiny Tim, they're configured properly at least. I've got reasonable numbers, except for that one. I don't know where this one gets its numbers from. This one says sea level 214, vacuum 235. This one is wrong. This says sea level 200, 220. This is back to the old ways. 200, 220. This is 214, 235. So these two look like they're configured properly. These seem like they've got round numbers that aren't quite right. This is looking to be getting a little bit taller than I want though. This this doesn't seem to attach right. Well, that's quite a crazy thing. Well, that did not help very much. Switching from the Araby to the baby sergeants and all this. Yep, not not really that constructive. Okay, okay. Well, I just noticed that we can actually purchase the new configurations on the Araby instead of just having the WAC Corporal, which is the basic version. And actually, this version is an AJ1027, so before this upper stage version. Uh, but this XASR looks good with the Vacuum ISP, so let's unlock just that one. And we do that by showing the UI and unlocking it here and so that'll be an improvement let's see uh, yeah that's pretty good but we need to go to fuselage and check that out wow this is pretty good it's not even at uh, TWR of 1 yet and uh, we've got 3600 let's slap the antennae on though this is gonna change everything. Oh well, too bad. I'm not going with the baby sergeants this time. Very odd shape. A little bit under power down here, but yeah, we're not we're still not getting enough thrust. We're still not getting enough delta V. And once we put these fairings on. It's not very good. Okay, still working on it, but uh, it's not going particularly well. I'm at the stage where I think I should just drop the fairing. I uh, Actually, I'm at the stage where I, I might want to drop the guidance unit because it's just too heavy. But uh, I'll drop the fairing first and try and make this without a fairing. I've also noticed that the Reflectron DP-10, which used to be my go-to antenna, doesn't have as much range as the Sputnik PS-1 antenna. So, but the thing is, this one is activated by default. This one is lighter though, 0 0.0005 instead of 0 0.005. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'll uh, come back to you once I've figured out what I've decided. But as you can see, at 16 tons, and again, this guy so you can only handle 20, we've got 8,450 if I take off the fairing. And... Well, we'll see what I can do. Okay, well, what can I say? This is the rocket that I've come up with. It's not pretty, and, and I don't know if it'll make orbit. It's a little bit short on delta V. I usually want 9,500 meters per second. Obviously, we don't have that. We don't have a lot of things. Uh, we've got a stage up here with one of the Arabies. Uh, it's uh, in the XASR1 mode which is the one that has the best ISP, uh, not the best thrust, this AJ-1027 has better thrust. So we've got one there, we've got four of them here, and so both of those will not be controlled by the guidance unit. So we're going to have to have this rocket pointed in the right direction before those two fire. And then, uh, yeah, we still have the little other rockets, so we do have four here and four there to settle things down to make sure they, uh, the engines light properly. 
But uh, yeah, the guns unit is going to have to do that. And it's going to have to do that using this, uh, this AJ-10 stage here. Now this AJ-10 stage does not have much thrust, which is a problem. It burns for the maximum amount of time that this engine can burn. And the reason I've decided to do that is because it's got among the best ISP available. So it's got definitely got a better ISP than the than the upper stages. So I want to use it for as long as possible, and that's what the limit says. Now it doesn't give us too much delta V, and uh, it has a low thrust to weight ratio. So maybe it would be smarter of me to just dump it all together and like uh, extend the bottom. But uh, actually, the Vanguard is burning for as long as it can too, judging from what the description says. So it's burning for 2 minutes and 25 seconds, which is its, Mac, uh, its uh, designated tested burn time. And then we have uh, 8 boosters, and each of those have XASRs as well. So lots of error bees involved. And so we've got 8 on the boosters down there, 4 in the 3rd stage, and 1 on the 4th stage. And that's what it takes to get us to this. And... 18 tons altogether, so we're coming close to the limit of the guidance unit, but not quite there. We could uh, throw some more boosters on, maybe, but I guess I'll I'll just try and see if this version, this Nick one, will work out. Should be interesting. Uh, I wonder if the battery will overheat. This is a procedural battery right here, and it's a little bit exposed, so somewhat worried about that. Yep, okay, well, it takes 30 days to build this, so we better get started. This could potentially be a grave fiasco for our space agency. We've got a year and a half to finish this contract, or we're going to basically be done for. This is not good. Maybe we should do planes instead. Looks like somehow we got two available upgrades, so I better use that. I think I should try and build the rockets faster. Let's have the rate rate on the second one up, and then, uh, yeah, hey, that's the best thing to do. Okay, so let's proceed and warp to complete the first one. Well, we're going for orbit now. This is probably the wrong color. Let's uh, go, uh, let's go to color film. I think this is the best option here. Yeah, this will take us through to 60s, I think. All right, and we're in the 50s right now. We're still in 51, but uh, throttle up. This is gonna be loud. SAS is a thing we have now. All right, we'll get smart ASS ready. Okay, ignition and launch. ASS. I think I just saw launch clamps, that's not right. Wow, booster set. Wow, I'm amazed it's worked up to this point. Okay, well they go the loud Aerobies, the XASRs. So again, we're going steeply because of the next stage, the second stage. This engine's got gimbling and it's got burners. I, I swear, we're, we're getting the launch clamp bug even though I have clamps be gone. So that's a little bit confusing. Oscillations are increasing, but this engine is about to go out anyway. Okay, set, and ignition. Oh, the, this engine failed. Ah. Uh, well, not much we can do without that. No ignitions remaining.
Well, was it really test flight that did it? No, that says okay, but we've only got uh, 1,153 data units on it, so I don't think it's that okay. Uh, let's try the next stage, and if this stage isn't going to light or anything. Or, yeah, it had the right fuel. Okay, yeah, let's stage and continue. This will go out of control, but uh, we're just getting more... Huh. That's funny, the WAC Corporal showed up on here, but these engines don't. These engines aren't configured for uh, test flight once they get upgraded. That's weird. Well, now we're a missile targeting Cape Canaveral, I think, or something like that. Range safety would have pulled the plug by now. Yeah, I'm getting a launch clamp bug. I just saw them again. Well, there's no real point in firing these engines if... if test flight isn't going to work on them. By the way, if you wonder where I put the science, I put it at the bottom of this stage. So, uh, I wonder if we could... Uh... Oh, yeah, we can get some science. That we can do. Ah, uh, but the pressure scan doesn't work. We've already done that before. Which biome was this, by the way? Grasslands. Hmm. I think maybe the biomes are misconfigured or there's an island here I can't see. I mean, there are islands over there, obviously, but... I guess we could think of it as maybe with the XASR, we're already so good with the Arabies that they're completely reliable? I'll take it, you know. It makes sense. We did do a lot of testing with the Arabies, so... Alright, well, no big explosion. Let's just uh, go back to the Space Center. Okay, so I don't know if it's going to do the trick, but I've decided to add some stabilization fins. We'll spin stabilize it so these are tilted a little bit. These aren't. These will just try to keep it prograde instead of having it deviate. And so I'll call this Nick 2. And uh, we'll build a build one of these for now. Okay, so, but we've got another Nick 1 uh, under construction, so let's see if we can launch that one. Okay, it's September 14th, 1951, and we will launch another Nick 1, assuming all the engines light. Thrall is up. Well, I thought Thrall is up. Ah, waiting for Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Now Thrall is up. SAS is on, and uh, we'll get Smart ASS ready. And engine light. And launch. Okay, booster set. Alright, and that's all off clean. So yeah, uh, no fins, no roll stabilization. We do have the Verner's fire, you can see them sort of got a little bit of a thing going there. Okay, set, and ignition. Okay, this time we have ignition. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, it's sort of deviating onto this side. Not enough gimbal? Not enough gimbal. Well, the fins would help with that. Ah. Uh, well, we tested this engine this time. It's got 825 seconds before failure, it says here. So even though we don't have many data units, it seems to have a long time before failure. Guess that's good. Well, we're coming back around here, but we're just gonna swing to the other side, aren't we? This is not a very good stage for holding the rocket steady in preparation for the stages that have no control. 
what's up with this guy. We know it has three degree of uh, gimbal range. It's not using it very well. Could I control it a little bit better? Oh yeah, I can. It's just Smart ASS that wasn't controlling it properly. That sucks. Okay, so this is a case where you're gonna have to take manual control, people. Institute a roll somehow? No, I can't, obviously. There's nothing to roll it. You need at least two engines for that. Okay, set. And ignition. Oh, not bad, not bad. Ah, uh, but it's increasing in pitch here. Don't want to see that. Well, we'll get a speed record anyway. Ah, uh, now it's got to work against us. I think we're gonna just let it flip around before separating and lighting the next one. Okay, coming around. Let's set. And let's have ignition. Okay, well, it's gonna go right past prograde. No hope for that. But maybe we'll get some speed out of it. No, it's turning around too quickly. Shucks. Next speed record will be 5,000 meters per second. Now this is going pretty darn fast. Oh, <laughs> still survived. What am I gonna have to do before these things don't survive? Well, at least we got a decent splash out of it this time. Yeah, I know, the stage was destroyed. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the the Nick 2 for the next episode. So I'll build in some suspense. And also I want to think up, maybe there's another solution to this whole thing. And maybe sleeping out would be a good idea. And um, I don't want to uh, warp to complete this one when I don't have another rocket in line. And I'm not necessarily sure I want to build another Nick 2 unless I've thought through what else could be done. So we do have 16.5 science. And one thing we might want to do is start unlocking other stuff because it takes time. Um, now this says basic orbital rocketry. It's a little bit ahead of where we're supposed to be. We're really in early orbital rocketry. Jumping to basic orbital rocketry is, you know... That's uh, 1958. We're only in 1951 just yet. Then again, I mean, we could do supersonic flight. Well, that's just one science. I guess I might as well. So uh, that will unlock in 18 days, which is why uh, maybe turbojets, ram intake, radial air intake, structural intake, some of this non-RP-0. Well, there's there's some uh, experimental stuff. There's the first satellite. Maybe we should get those. Yeah, I think uh, that'll be more in line with the time. Well, it's a little bit ahead of where we are. But, uh, yeah, that is as well. So, this is more in line. And we'll get the Geiger counter, which is another experiment we can do. And the Explorer 1 probe, which is nice and light. Actually, that would be very helpful. The Explorer 1 probe will be really helpful. Okay, let's get that. And maybe that will give us another solution to the problem of getting to orbit. Because that has SAS on it, but it's much lighter than the guidance unit that we have right now. Uh, but what can it... Uh, well, we have to wait on research. But it doesn't say how much mass it can carry. I'll have to get it and see. It has SAS, but it doesn't say that it's got a... Uh, let's see, but this Able Delta is 0.14 instead of 0.6. This one is 0.35. So th there's a huge improvement over the guidance unit that we started out with. So that, yeah, I think that'll save us a lot. Okay. 
So we'll have a better chance of getting to orbit next time thanks to those units there. And so look forward to that and also a test of the Nick 2 to see if that works out. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.